We want to thank all of our patrons. Every little bit really helps, and we really appreciate your support. Yeah, y'all are great. And then, son of a... Hi friends, this is James. I'm on Tritea. This is a short little episode. I'm going to take you guys along for a ride of me trying to work out this um, NMEA0183. Um, I'm like trying to wire up. My VHF has um, GPS and I want to send it to my digital yacht IAIS. That's the theory. That's what we're going to try to do. The wires are crazy small, like 26 gauge or something nuts. So um, I got these specialty little uh, ring terminals. Um, we're gonna try to hook them up. So let's get to a tighter view and I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Okay, hopefully this view is gonna be okay. It's gonna be a little tricky, tight quarters here. Now, the general rule of thumb is that you don't solder anything on a sailboat because if you solder something and it heats up, then that solder could melt through and make other connections. And that's a great risk of fire. And we all know that the risk of fire on a boat is uh, far deadlier than if you're in a car or in your home. You, you have a greater chance of getting out of your car in your home if, if there's a fire than you are, you know, halfway between here and Hawaii. So if at all possible, never solder anything. Always use heat shrink crimping and the like. Uh, so let's go ahead and solder something. Um, in this instance, I don't know any other way to go about this. So, and also know that there's like very low voltage happening. So I'm not concerned about it heating up. It's also fused. So um, should be chill. I have this, this is coming off of, let me show you guys, the Digital Yacht I AIS wireless AIS receiver and the wires are crazy small because they're in MEA and then these are the like power wires Now the whole reason I'm making this video is because I couldn't find anything out online Any solutions to this problem like it showed you know the order of which to hook things up, but I didn't no one said like what kind of you know terminals to get or anything like that <clears throat> So I went to this specialty electronic store here in LA. And I got these teeny little ring uh, These teeny little um, ring terminals and we're gonna try to solder them onto the ends of these small wires and Then use those and then we can heat shrink those if we need to Let's go ahead and make sure that these actually fit on this bus bar I plan on using. And I apologize if my hands and arms are in the way. I'm just not sure how to video in this tight area any better than we are. Alright, so they work. So, disaster one averted. Now this is just a scrap of wood I got on the back of my panel because I don't want to mess up my panel. Now, I'm probably going to explain some things that might be common sense to a lot of people who have done electronics, but the whole reason I'm doing this is, I, the whole reason I do any of my how-to videos is because it's obstacles I've come up against and I couldn't find the answer to, or things I know how to do, and I want to show people who have no idea, like, as many, I want to explain as much of the steps as I can think to explain. So... <clears throat> If I'm saying stuff that, that seems silly or, or completely obvious, then I apologize. But some of us out there have no idea what we're doing. So, um, First thing I'm going to do is called tinning the wire. So we got our wire stripped here. It's very small. And you just heat up a little solder. And you, you coat the whole wire in it. And most marine wire comes tinned. It's like got solder along the whole thing that helps with corrosion. I'm going to go ahead and tin this one too, just because these are the first two we're going to play with. Alright. Now, the next thing I'm going to do... 
I'm gonna see if I can stand one of these guys up in here like that and see if we can get solder in there and then we'll heat it up now again there might be better ways to do this this is just how I'm going about it so now we got a little solder in there let's go ahead and make this our our power to our unit so I'm going to heat that up a little bit and get our tinned wire in there. Okay, so that's in there. I'm going to like cool off a second so I can grab down at the bottom. And now I'm going to go ahead and fill it up here. And then you just hold it in place so that it doesn't come loose while it's cooling down. I see I could have got it a little better if I'd gone all the way down. But this thing is not gonna be it shouldn't be moving around. We're gonna have it secured, so we're just gonna do our best. I'm going to add a little more to it just for fun. Alright. Now that's soldered in there. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do our negative terminal. We're just going to repeat what I did because it seemed like it worked. I'm just going to put that in there. Feed it in. Very rewarding feeling. I'm going to keep it, go ahead and keep it hot and get that, get our wire in there. And then just hold it steady. See, I went a little further that time because I think I'll be happier if it's closer to that wire. Alright, now let's go ahead and fill up a reservoir again like we did. There's a little more fun than melting metal. Alright, that seems good. Okay. So, the two NMEA that I want to deal with, you can't see it on camera. I ain't gonna monkey with it. So, I'm just going to read it to you. It's right here on the label. It says red is the power for positive. Black is the power for negative. Orange is NMEA out. Brown is NMEA out. Yellow is NMEA in plus. Green is NMEA in minus. So we want the yellow and the green. So we're going to go ahead and put some terminals on those. Because in, in my mind, if this all works right, the way I'm imagining it, is our VHF is going to send us out our GPS coordinates via NMEA and then it's going to go to our AIS Wi-Fi little unit here which wirelessly transmits the data to our iPad and our iPhones and uh, then we should have our GPS beaming in but we'll see. I never messed with this stuff so um, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, I don't know. I have GPS unit that um, I use for my iPad when I'm under anchor and everything anyway, but I thought if there's one in here, couldn't hurt to kind of share the data since we have the network. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do what we did before, fill this up. Go ahead and tin our wire. Move it up here, maybe it'll stay more stable. All right, <clears throat> go ahead and do our yellow one because that's the one that I tinned up. We'll just hit this until it gets soft. 
And then, son of a... I'm going to trim this just a little bit for that fray. All right. Let's try it again. Let's heat this up. All right. There we are. Let's let it cool off. Grab down there real deep. Need a rubber band to hold this damn thing. I don't have it though. All right, let's fill up that void because that wire is real small. Ah, oh, son of a. So don't do that. That's annoying. That's what happens. You get too excited trying to fill it up. But now it should be full because I put a lot in there. So let's just let it cool. If you hang out too long on there, ow. It will pop out like that. It's full to the top at least, so. Ooh, that's still hot. All right, now let's go ahead and tin our green one first. Last time I did it backwards, I think. Okay, we tinned our wire so it's primed up. Get our terminal here. <clears throat> All right, seems pretty happy. Go ahead and try to get our final one in there. All right, there it is. Let it cool down and grab real deep and then we'll fill up that top. Hopefully I learned from my last mistake Ow. not to go all crazy with it and just do a little bit at a time otherwise it'll pop out. Alright that seems good. Now we don't need to worry about these outs because um, I don't know what they would go out and talk to. With, with NMEA, there's talkers and listeners, and there can only be there can only be one talker. A lot of things can listen, but there can only be one talker. So um, right now, the only thing I'm trying to work out is getting GPS from this unit into that unit, and this is what we need for our terminals on this end of the business. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and get that oh, hooked up to our bus bar and then we'll look at these um, from the VHF confirm that the, the colors are all the same you know directions and uh, we'll pair them up the way they need to be and then someday we'll see if they work I'm not doing well down here I think well let's see See, so I want to do this one for my my power for the unit and my ground for the unit. And then we'll just do these as they fall. This is like an old bus bar. I'll probably replace it with a new one, but this is what I got on hand. I'm 
Again, I'll try to stay out of the camera's way, but it's pretty tricky. So that's our hot from that side, for the unit, rather. This is our ground. I'm going to secure all this with a uh, cable tie so that it's, it's nothing can put pressure or tension on these. If I'm monkeying with the panel, this will all be secured here so that nothing can pull it out, you know, because these are delicate and, and just like fragile. All right, let's go ahead and see what do we want to do here. Let's do green. With green is our N plus. And then yellow is our N minus. And the way this is going to work is then we'll hook up the outs from the VHF unit to the corresponding ins, and they'll just chat it up, I reckon. Nice little connector. I wish I had that sort of business. Okay, so I consulted the manual for the the um, ICOM here, and uh, it says that I can send out my uh, location info, data rather, so it should work pretty cool. Um, the manual says that brown and white are the talkers, and these are our listeners, so we know we want these two that are our talkers. Now the colors are a little different. That's why I uh, went ahead and checked out the um, manual to see what, you know, what was what. And you know, these these are obviously the listeners for this unit, but we don't need those because we're not trying to tell it anything. Um, you could hook up like a uh, an external GPS or I don't know various different things, but the um, this VHF unit has a the distress option so that it sends a uh, your location information to the Coast Guard um, which hopefully whenever we get to test that out but that is something that comes with this unit and you can also send that information through the NMEA to um, whatever you know if you want to send it to there Let's go ahead and get these stripped down. And as we did before, we're going to go ahead and tin these. I'm going to do this so that it's not fighting me. So that one's tinned. There we go. 
Now we'll just repeat what we did because it seemed like it worked okay. So we got our little ring terminal here. Ow, son of a. We're going to fill it up. Boy, it's getting dark in here. I guess we'll go ahead and do this first one that we tend first, the white talker. All right, and that's buried down to the sleeve like a like it. I did pretty good on that one. Let that cool down a second, and then I'll top it off. We'll just fill it up. Get the best connection we can on it. There we go. That one's happy. Set that there. Rinse and repeat, as they say. Dang it. All right, seems pretty, pretty good. Now we'll get our brown tin wire, heat it up a little bit, heat up our reservoir. All right, there we go. That's stoked. That one's in there good. Let that cool off. You son of a... And then just for giggles, go ahead and fill it up so we know the connection's good. All right. In theory, that's all we got to do. Now, we want to look at, we need the corresponding wires to go to one another, plus and minus. I think. We'll see. Um, we want the white one is the data out plus. And this says that the data in plus is yellow. So white to yellow. leaves us with brown to green green is the negative in and brown is the negative out so this will be cool if it works I'll be so stoked so there we have it here's our connection um, we're going to start with this simple network and uh, see if we can get it to work and then um, go from there. Mainly I made this video to show you guys how I was doing these ring connectors because uh, man these things are tricky to deal with these little wires here. So and also if, you know which it's all this is like um, it's fuse protected so the only kind of power coming in is that little power cable. It's hooked up to a fuse box. Or it's going to be hooked up to a fuse box. So I can't see any reason why the, these, uh, the solder would melt in this instance. Because it's such low, low voltage setup. Um, so this is the only time and the only way that I would use solder on the boat is this specific sort of application. I hope this helps somebody out. 
Um, you can get these little ring terminals probably online, but I got them at Fry's Electronics here in Los Angeles, a specialty electronics shop. And uh, I'll show you the package real quick. Here's our, it says 22 to 18 AWG number 10 stud high temperature ring. And uh, you get a lot of them. I think it's like five bucks or something. All right, and um, we'll go ahead and get this uh, turned on once we get everything wired up and see how it works. Something like that, welcome to the future. So the NEMA connections that we made did work. They are transmitting our latitude and longitude from our VHF unit to our iPad and cellular phones, whatever we want. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys how, how we know it works and um, what we have, what works and what doesn't work for this setup. Um, so I've got my VHF turned on and uh, let me bring you guys in for a closer look. Okay, so as you can see, there's our latitude and longitude on our VHF unit. Let's go ahead and take a look at what shows up on the iPad. I have my sailing instruments turned on and my VHF turned on. The sailing instruments turns on the digital yacht IAIS, and um, that's what's transmitting our latitude and longitude from here into our iPad and into any of our mobile devices. So we got our iPad. Go ahead and open up Digital Yachts IAIS app first. And this is like, it's a little, it's not very user friendly, but you can, um, and I guess now you can link up your charts underneath this. I don't have it set up that way yet, but um, this shows all of our, oh, there it is. So I do have it set up that way. This is all of our uh, AIS targets around us. That if we were out at sea, this is what we would be worrying about. So this shows us right now that we are connected to our latitude and longitude and the AIS is working. Um, this iPad is a Wi-Fi only iPad. There's no, you can't get a cellular program for it. So that means there's no installed GPS chip, which is precisely why I had to create this connection that sends our latitude and longitude here into our device. So now we know that we see all of our AIS units and this is where you'd set up your AIS alarms and whatnot. So let's go ahead. I'll show you iNavX is recommended to work with the digital yacht stuff. Um, it seems to be the most compatible. Um, it's not my first choice app. Uh, I like Navionics much better, but we'll talk about that in a second. So here we are in iNavX. Let's go ahead and go to the instruments. Okay, so it says it's not available. So we're gonna hit TCP and we're gonna hit link. And that's connecting us here to our digital yacht instrument. So now it's connected, we go done and here we go. Here's our latitude and longitude, which matches up with the VHF. So now we go back to our chart and it shows us in our berth here at New Marks. This guy's underway. Let's see what he's up to. He's going 6.8 knots. So yada yada, all your AIS info. So iNavX is cool because it, you know, you can use it to, to track and create routes and put in waypoints and whatever. Um, that's steady whining in the background. Um, but uh, yeah, so so that that works on iNavX. Let's go ahead and close that out, and then I'll show you what's up with Navionics. Now, in theory, Navionics should work, but w everything I read online about this situation and why it's not working is basically Navionics likes to lock out users from being able to change any settings easily and. Part of that has to do with the fact that they make a lot of their money on charts and different things. So they don't want you to easily access things that you didn't buy from them. Um, the uh, When I click the position button, it just spins. Nothing ever happens. 
it never shows us where we are. Even though, um, actually I'll zoom into here real quick. Into our settings, like on our Wi-Fi, we're in, see this is the Digital Yacht IAIS connection. Um, so it creates a Wi-Fi connection, that's how everything else works with it. But Navionics refuses to recognize that connection for whatever reason. Even when you go into the, the side menu and you go connect device, it just tells you to turn on your Wi-Fi, go to mobile settings, open a Wi-Fi, select the device network, which I did that. Obviously, we're connected to Wi-Fi because everything else uses it, but Navionics refuses to. So if anybody's watching this and knows a fix for me so that I can use Navionics with my uh, NEMA setup, um, I would love to know the answer to that. Um, yeah, see, so it says unable to determine your location. So, but at least I have iNavX to work with and the uh, Digital Yacht IAIS. So we got it all worked out. Um, and that's how you set up a simple NEMA network. Very simple. Um, you can get a multiplexer and do more complex and have more things talking to each other and listening to each other. But for um, Tritea, that's all we need right now. And probably won't need much more than that ever. Um, it might be cool to, you know, be able to transmit the depth and speed and all that stuff when um, we get the whole new trans, uh, like transducer installed um, to have that go to the iPad. But it's that's just like a over the top convenience. It's completely unnecessary. So um, we'll go ahead and button it up and uh, get some other stuff done on the boat today. And I hope this video helped you guys. And if it did, please give it a thumbs up and a like and leave us a comment if you have any thoughts about it, you, you know uh, a way that might be easier to do it than I did, you know, let the viewers know, let me know, that'd be great. Um, you know, or if this helped you, I, I love to hear um, when these efforts, you know, pay off for other people. It's the whole reason I'm doing these how-to videos is to help you guys out and to help anyone out that doesn't, you know, hasn't tackled this sort of obstacle before. So thanks for watching and thanks so much to all our patrons. We got some new ones last week and we're grateful to have you. And uh, until next time, fair winds. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. It helps us a lot. Thanks again to all of our patrons. Your contributions help us get the boat ready for big things. Until next time.